opened up um, a cave museum in Iceland that I read a study on, and they want to pr preserve the atmosphere of the cave, so they built a wall, but it's like they're actually physically on the location, so you put on these glasses, and it basically does a reverse effect of the wall. It makes the wall disappear. So, so they're walking around at the physical location, but all the technology does is take away that wall barrier, so you feel, you, you feel, physically feel like you're connected to that cave. I have another comment about this customization. Like, I see these nowadays when they play computer games, it's not only how to do these competition contests, but they put like different hat, different outfit, different boots, different something. I don't know why it's so important, but what you see that it actually be, could be customized to every individual so person. I think that was mentioned today in the plenary where like he was talking about technology and being able to house and give it, be, control the experience, make it a good experience. Okay. But this technology kind of shows us that, that it's going to be harder and harder to do because people are going to want to customize that experience for themselves. Mm -hmm. And we can customize the experience as far as the location is concerned, but when it gets down to individualizing it for each person, and if they have any, the ability of that person is high, they, they're able to bring their own digital contents mm -hmm. perhaps into their own environments and therefore their own experience is much different than maybe the designer had intended. Have you seen what Expedia is doing? They're working with some CVVs and they're showing clips of destinations and then they're measuring it through the eye. Oh, the uh, eye tracking. Eye tracking and then they look at the reactions and then measure that and then they base the, the clip on the destination to the reaction. So they show beach, for example, mm -hmm. and they should show the reaction to that type of person. The, and actually they're editing movies this way too, mm -hmm. to show the trailers, which used to be a very labor intensive process, now it's all uh, done by digital technology. So, Amazing. yeah, this, this all goes back to my <coughs> worries about um, privacy, right? So now that we're tracking people's eye movements, where they concentrate, this goes into issues of negotiation and honesty and truth and really pulling out more information than we even really know ourselves, right? So um, this is a case study we did at our media center where we had a narrative and students had made, created a narrative. Some information was stolen from our media center library. When you came in, there was a series of posters and cards just like this around the library and they got hints based on the cards and where they all were physically in the location and they had to move from one to the other based on the hints that they were involved. So it was kind of a gamified process. So after they went from one hint to the other to the other, after about a 20 minute session, they knew all the facilities in the library and how to find a book and look up a periodical. And this, this is something that World Heritage Japan has already asked us to help develop. I get that, all right. Thanks again, guys. <laughs>